the woman cautiously approached, gently peering through the crack in the door to see if she could see anything inside. However, in the dark room, she strained her eyes but couldn't see anything. She then reached out to remove the latch from the outside and slowly opened the bedroom door. As soon as she opened it, a foul odor, reminiscent of dead mice, wafted out, making her almost vomit, tears streaming down her face due to disgust. She hurriedly ran outside to the porch to breathe in fresh air, waiting until the nausea passed before returning to the doorway, covering her nose with a cloth. After preparing herself, she took a deep breath and stepped into the room, calling out, Mama, Mama, Mom, are you there? The room remained silent, with no response from Mrs. Selina. After waiting for a moment, she called out again, Mom, Mom, are you hungry? Shall I bring some food for you, Mom? At this point, Mrs. Fedra could confirm that something had happened to Mrs. Selina. She cautiously approached the bed where Mrs. Selina lay, however, as soon as she entered, she felt a chilling sensation. The room was filled with the overpowering stench of death, coupled with an eerie coldness, creating an atmosphere of extreme gloom and horror. Even Mrs. Fedra, known for her sharp and sour demeanor, felt her hands and feet sweating with nervousness and fear. She felt as though someone was staring at her, from under the covers, sending shivers down her spine. Although Mrs. Fedra usually appeared bold and unyielding, deep down, she was a very timid person. Despite spending decades working in the VAC area, she had never dared to go there alone at night. She couldn't understand why she was still standing there. Despite being terrified, on the bed, Mrs. Selina was still wrapped in blankets. If one looked closely, they would realize that the figure under the covers was definitely not a living person, as there were no signs of breathing in the abdomen. Swallowing hard, Mrs. Fedra reached out to grab the edge of the blanket and slowly pulled it down. As the blanket was unveiled, she was petrified, unable to utter a word. Underneath lay a pale, ghastly face, with patches of white hair peeling off, and Mrs. Selina's body was as stiff as wood, with pus oozing out, soaking the sheets. Despite covering her nose with a thick cloth, the foul smell still penetrated, making Mrs. Fedra wretch uncontrollably. She screamed in terror, her legs trembling. As she tried to free herself from Mrs. Selina's grasp, her wrist bleeding from the sharp. Black nails digging in like thorns. Mom is hungry. Mom is very hungry. Feed mom quickly. Quickly. A hoarse, unearthly voice emanated from Mrs. Selina's mouth. Even though her lips remained closed, the eerie sound echoing relentlessly. But even more terrifying was Mrs. Selina's eyes, which suddenly opened wide, staring with a vacant, terrifying gaze that froze Mrs. Fedra on the spot. Luckily, at that moment, there was a call from outside. Mrs. Fedra, Mrs. Fedra. Where are you? What time is it? Are you still asleep? Hearing the call, Mrs. Fedra felt as if she had found a lifeline. However, her mouth was dry and she couldn't speak. She wanted to scream for a help, but it felt like something was stuck in her throat, preventing her from uttering a word. At this moment, the bedroom door seemed to be sealed shut by an invisible hand and the latch inside automatically clicked closed, witnessing this horrifying and eerie phenomenon. Mrs. Fedra's mouth gaped in shock, fear almost causing her to faint right there on the spot. Inside the house, Mr. Joyce looked around, but couldn't find Mrs. Fedra anywhere, looking at the bedroom door, which remained tightly shut from the inside. He gently knocked and called out, Mom, Mom, are you feeling better? Have you seen her daughter Ram? After calling for the second time, there was finally a response from inside the room. I don't know. The voice sounded hoarse, unlike Mrs. Selina's usual tone. Sensing something amiss, Mr. Joyce responded. Why does your voice sound strange? Are you feeling better?
Please open the door. Let me see. I'm fine. Don't worry. I want to be alone. Mr. Joyce. Although noticing the difference in Mrs. Selina's voice, attributed it to fatigue and didn't suspect anything. He stepped outside and went to search the nearby neighbors' houses for Mrs. Fedra. Despite searching all the neighboring houses, even running to Mrs. Selina's parents' house, he found no trace of her. Eventually, he had to return home and wait. Sitting on the wooden bench, Mr. Joy smoked his pipe, muttering, that stubborn woman, at a time like this, she disappears without a trace, good at eating and causing trouble. She'll know who's in charge when she gets back. The family's pond needed attention, and Mr. Joyce had been operating the pump outside all day before leaving. He had instructed Mrs. Fedra to rest for a while at home before joining him outside. However, as time passed without her return, his frustration grew. By nearly 6 p.m., Mrs. Fedra was still nowhere to be found. Left with no choice, Mr. Joyce had to go outside to attend to his duties at the vac area. As he stepped out of the house, Mrs. Fedra, who had just regained consciousness inside the room, began to stir. However, her eyes looked strange, darting around continuously, occasionally breaking into a chilling smile. Glancing through the crack in the door, she saw that Mr. Joyce had left, so she slowly lowered the door latch and stepped outside. Her gait was unlike her usual self. Only the balls of her feet touched the ground, while her heels seemed to hover above. She went straight down to the ground floor to search for food. As she passed by the dog spot under the kitchen, for some reason, it stared intently at her and began growling and barking anxiously. Down there, Mrs. Fedra rummaged through all the pots, pans, and bowls, but found nothing edible. Eventually, she spotted a jar in the corner and approached it. Upon opening it, she found it filled with white rice, with a jar of lard on top. Her eyes gleamed as she looked hungrily at the jar of lard. She grabbed a bowl and scooped a bowl full of rice then took the entire jar of lard and ran straight back into the room with every step. She chuckled gleefully, even dancing with joy. Upon seeing what Mrs. Fedra held in her hands, Mrs. Selina licked her lips hungrily. Before even placing the bowl down, she eagerly extended her dry, bony, black hand and stuffed handfuls of raw rice into her mouth occasionally dipping her fingers into the jar of lard and smearing a large chunk onto her tongue, eating it with the raw rice. Just a moment later, everything was calm again. Even the scattered grains on the floor were quickly picked up and devoured by both. Both Mrs. Selina's mouth and limbs were now greasy from the lard, and she occasionally licked her blackened, extended tongue around her lips showing signs of lingering desire. Mrs. Selina's horse, eerie voice asked, Have you found everything? Is there anything else to eat? Mrs. Fedra shook her head and replied sharply, I've searched thoroughly, only raw rice is left. Do you want more before I fetch it? Go fetch another bowl and bring it up here. Also, check the altar to see if there's anything edible. Bring it down here too. After scooping another bowl of raw rice, Mrs. Fedra approached the altar and lit an incense stick, inhaling deeply with satisfaction. She then grabbed a bunch of green bananas and two plates of fruit and brought them into the room. Later, within the darkened room, the sounds of chewing, munching, and giggling echoed. Mrs. Selina, feeling full, lay back on the bed, covered herself entirely with a blanket, while Mrs. Fedra rolled under the bed, occasionally bumping against the bed's frame as if teasing. Mrs. Selina. It was not until 9 p.m. that evening, when Mr. Joyce finished his work and headed home, he hesitantly addressed the others there. 